Well, hello, sunshine. What I got for you today, I got my Steel 026 here. Uh, I did a muffler mod on it. Got before test cuts and before dyno run. And I got an after dyno run. I got video of how I did the muffler mod on it. And I got a after dyno run. Uh, so I'll show you those results here in a little bit. Uh, show you exactly what I did to the muffler on this 026. We're going to build this up along the way. This is just the start. I'm going to check the dyno numbers along the way, see what works, see what don't. If you enjoy something about the video, give me a thumbs up. If I think I earned it and if it didn't, don't. It's all right. Either way, it don't put no money in my pocket, but it lets me know if I'm doing good or bad. Uh, so without further ado, let's head back to the shop and I'll do some test cuts while you guys are watching that. Yeah, hello everybody. Been kind of busy. Weather's been kind of good. Been doing a lot of other things other than being in the saw shop because this is just my hobby here. Uh, we're back with the Steel 026 and uh, we got dyno up and going good. We got a base run on this. Uh, I'll show you later in this video. Uh, also took another base run on another saw uh, just because I'm I'm learning my dyno a little bit and trying to make sure it's consistent. Uh, if it's a little off. I know it's a little stingy and I could play with the spreadsheet and I could make it read 100 horsepower if I wanted to but that's kind of like cheating at solitaire. Uh, you ain't pulling nobody but yourself and I ain't into that so uh, my dyno may stay a little stingy but it's, that's not a big issue. Uh, so I'm going to work on a steel 026 today. I'm going to do a little bit of a muffler mod here on it. It's got four holes in it. Is how they come from the factory. Some of them come with less than that. This must be a later one. The earlier ones, I guess, from what I understand, didn't have that big a hole in it. So it's got four holes that are, oh, they're right at a quarter inch. Uh, we're going to start cutting this out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this. I'm going to take this area out. Uh, I think while I'm sitting here doing this and talking to you guys, I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of this muffler can off here because I want to take a measurement here. Uh, but like I say, I'm finally back out in the saw shop. It's been dry. We've been in essentially, I'm not kidding, we've been in essentially a drought here since probably July, June. Um, we started out with a wet, cool spring, and it turned off dry. Uh, suffered hay crop, suffered uh, row crop with everybody. Uh, and we just finally got a little bit of rain here the other day, uh, yesterday, I guess. My wife didn't even know it was coming. She walked out on the porch, and a raindrop hit her in the head, and it knocked her, knocked her plum off the porch out there in the gravel. She is laying there in some sort of, uh, it knocked her unconscious, uh, threw her into some sort of shock. She was sitting there quivering, uh, doing the old crappie flop out there in the rocks. I didn't know what to do, so I done the best thing I knew how. I grabbed a bucket of dust and threw it in her face, brought her right out of it. So, anyhow, there I made noise long enough, I got that off. So I measure this port. I'm about 0.9, I'm just going to round it off, I'm about 906 thousandths across, but 0.9, uh, long way, and 0.55 the other way, so 0.9 times 0.55 equals 0.495, We'll take the square root of that, and we're going to come up with 0.79. Uh, so, we've got almost 8 tenths of a square inch of area here in the exhaust port, same size as my exhaust port. And I don't want this, I want, I want my whole, my port, uh, I think if we just open them up and elongate them a little bit, we're going to help this a little bit, and we're going to get a, uh, then we'll get a dyno reading on it. We've got some parts arrived for our 026. 
I've read that an upgrade on the air breather, air filter would be a 260, MS 260, but you got to replace the back cover. So we got a back cover and an air filter uh, to hopefully help with that restriction. I don't think it's going to. And we've got us a genuine Chinese uh, 40, 44.7 mil uh, cylinder and piston here. We're going to pour it on that. And we're going to keep going until we stop losing power. <clears throat> start losing power or start losing runnability. It's still going to be a chainsaw deal. Um, but we're going to start off with doing the muffler mod. Today's video, we'll start off with doing the muffler mod. And uh, do a dyno run on that and see where we're at. We'll also run some test cuts with it. Uh, that'll have to be... It'll be on the same video, but that'll have to be tomorrow. Uh, it's dark out right now, and I want to be able to record those test cuts. We'll get timing numbers later, but at least on my dyno, this saw is disappointing. So I don't know yet if my dyno's a little stingy, or if uh, this saw's weak. I believe my dyno is a little bit stingy, but I'm not apt to change it right now. If it's if it's consistently stingy, and I've been getting consistent results out of my dyno, I've played with it quite a bit. I've not posted any of that, and I probably won't. Um, there's no really good video of it other than just what I was uh, recording to get the numbers. But suffice it to say, I think the dyno is working properly. The numbers may be a little low. If I run the correction factor, it's actually pretty close. Uh, but I honestly, I think the correction factor is a little generous to what it should be. I think this ought to be running closer where it's at. I'm showing right at uh, 3.2 horse on this, I think. I'd have to remember. I'd have to look back. I dynoed it a couple days ago. Uh, but I'll have charts here in the dyno runs of the pre and the post. I'll work here just, uh, well, here in just a little bit for you guys. And I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but I've got one boat hole in there and the gasket keeps sliding down. And I'm trying to get that other boat hole started put this can back on there the only reason I took the back side of this can off was to measure that exhaust port I wanted to know what it was uh, and like I say I like running all oh, three quarters to seven eighths so three quarters would be 75 seven eighths would be uh, what 81 25 whatever so between 75 and let's say 82 percent is about where I hang out for my muffler hole size. Uh, if I was running, probably get away with more than that. But we're going to open that up. Probably just take most of that hump off there, and I'll bring you guys back when I got this done. We're going to fire up, put her on dyno. I'm not going to tear up this steel muffler if I modify it big I'll get a different one but there's a under this shield there's a deflector in there and I will probably open that deflector up a little bit too because <clears throat> that deflector actually has less area the deflector has less area than those four holes are even allowing so actually my pinch points at the deflector right now I'm going to open this up plus open that deflector up bring it back I just took die grinder and gouged that out I'll take the grinder here in a minute burn tool and clean up anything on it I got some little flashing in there I want to pull out you guys ever wonder why your doctor bill so expensive I can tell you right here right here you know what's wrong with these scissors and these clamps and these clamps they're built out of stainless steel I'll tell you that 
My wife brought them home from clinic because they're expired. You believe that? Expired. Now throw them away. She said, nah, I'll bring them home. She allowed, she didn't figure I'd care if it's expired. I'll eat pet, peanut butter that expired 10 years ago. I don't care. Uh, toughen a guy up. But yeah. <laughs> expired. Ain't that, ain't that crud. Um, so yeah, next time you, uh, your doctor bill so hi well tell the doctor I said thanks I appreciate the tools uh, I'll get my machine out here untie it unleash it from the wall turn it loose oh Clark Griswold ain't got nothing on me does he Okay, now we can clean that up. That feels pretty smooth. I'm going to take this over there to the air compressor. This is what we wound up with on the exhaust port. And if you remember that flap in here was uh i've pried that up and probably doubled the area of that exhaust well i'll get this exhaust put back on here i want to show you guys this intake or air cleaner here in just a little bit filter air filter i'm not not super excited about that or super confident in it uh very very poor design uh, and I know a lot of the saws then had them the chokes not in the carburetor it's in the air cleaner and I was aware of that I think that's got an 036 I think it's the same way there and that saw if I remember right it's got two different kinds of bolts in this muffler this old saw i'd say has had a little bit of a rough life so guys let me know what you want me to do with it i mean i got some ideas but on the other hand i'm open to suggestions too basically i want to keep it firewood saw it's not going to be hot i'm not going to take the choke out of it uh i'm not i'm not going to do away with runnability but we will i'm sure we'll end up porting it yeah hopefully i don't have to do any machine work I've got another cylinder there we can run it and dyno and play. I want to show you that exhaust there. <coughs> Excuse me. The air filter on a. This is for a MS260, which is very similar to an 026, but it is different. Uh, now you'll notice right here, about the only place air can get through there, that's solid. That's solid plastic all, all the way down in here. The only, I'll see if the light will shine through that. You can see the only place light will, or air can come through the, the, the back side of this. This faces backwards on the saw. The only place air can get through there is right there. And it's got to come down. Now it can come in, air can come in about anywhere it wants from this front side. <clears throat> but if air comes in here, It's got to make a 90 degree turn and come into the carburetor this way. And if you'll see the choke flap, that's what chokes it. That choke flap stays basically in the way. This can't get a straight shot of air into that carburetor. It's, it either has to come up from high and down over this and into the carburetor, which is not very efficient. That's not even very wide in there. Or... It can come in the front and swirl around and come through and of course uh, those hold down screws will even be in the way everything in this thing is just restrictive as all get out <clears throat> I'm open to suggestions on what to do about this 
Now, I may have to figure out my own thing. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm not going to mess with the air filter right now. I'm anxious to try that. Uh, I'm anxious to put this on dyno with the exhaust. Uh, air filter looks dirty, but it's actually pretty clean. Uh, another thing I don't like about these chokes, uh, this one will, you about got to hold that down that extra little bit to get it to start. It makes this all real, those chokes, if they don't seal right, and this one doesn't seal right, you can close that up like this on that air cleaner. You can close that up and it doesn't seal off good around there which is just like having your choke about half choke. A lot of these old saws, these old series saws like this won't start good and it's due to that choke in there. Uh, so this here is going to be kind of hard to start but I'm going to start it up and let it warm up and uh, we're going to put a 7 pin 3A sprocket on it and put it on dyno. filter cover on there because I dynoed it without the air filter cover on there I forgot to put it on so I made my test cut the same way yeah I'm just kind of playing here making sure I can get consistent results and I want to make sure my results ain't lying either uh, I'm pretty confident in my dyno but then again it's a new piece of equipment now I gotta see if there's any bugs in it steel 26 test cut be the same chain and bar as the other one steel 26 warmed up so we're going to go right into a couple test cuts guys subscribe if you haven't if you like it you want to see more of this want to see this channel grow and we're starting to do bigger and better things <laughs> Let's go inside. I'll bring up the dyno results of this saw and the other saw. Well, this saw, before and after the mods. I think you'll enjoy the results of that. And I'll show you them two test cuts side by side too. Uh, so you can uh, see if the dyno results match the test cuts. Okay, here's Steel 026 stock. 
probably somewhat wore out but stock uh, our max RPM on that was 12671 that's where it tuned at for the most power a little bit leaner than I like to run them uh, but that's where it produced the most power uh, 3.21 horsepower at 10,020 RPMs 2.86 foot-pounds of torque that was at 7251 I believe the clutch was slipping in here about 6800 it looks like from the dyno and I could hear it while I was pulling it down clutch seemed like it was slipping a little bit and uh, but it is what it is so that was our baseline run we did the muffler mod on it uh, we stretched it up to 3.7 horsepower and raised the peak horsepower range from 10,020 to 10,191 and we haven't done any port work or anything to change that so that was just restriction on the muffler I think that was just moving all the air it could so it was it was somewhat restricted there uh, move the foot pounds up to 3.27 substantial gain there uh, but that shows at 6,000 and seven RPMs and I believe the clutch was slipping in here I'm not sure that outside of the clutch slipping that's an accurate measurement because if the clutch slips the engine actually makes more RPMs per revolution of the clutch drum therefore offering you another gear reduction uh, can't do anything about it it's not the dyno's fault but I think I recognize what that is. I think that number may be a little bit high on the max foot pounds of torque due to where it's at in the RPM range. Uh, but our, our torque increase here was real and substantial and our peak horsepower was a substantial gain over where it was. It also moved it higher in the RPM range. My high RPM range is here. Here's where I throttle it up, start putting a load to it. You can see the load increase. Here's where she bogs down over here on your right hand side of the screen. Just backwards of uh, some charts you may see. This is how it makes the most sense in my mind. This is how I run it. I can change one digit in my spreadsheet and I can turn it the other way. Uh, uh, on a comparison, uh, you can see again the muffler mod stretched my highest RPMs out. Uh, quite a little bit and it moved uh, I was able to get the, get some more load to it here uh, so it stretched out oh like your lemon range a little bit uh, we like to say we moved the peak peak horsepower from here over to here you can see it over here we moved it from 1020 to 101.91 and we moved from 3.21 horsepower to 3.7 with just that muffler mod, I think that muffler could be a little bit better, but I'm not going to weld a pipe in that one. I'll get a different can and do it too, because I'm liable to mess it up real good the first time or two till I get it how I want. So I'll probably not tear up my original steel can. I'll probably get an aftermarket Chinese in one to do that with. But <clears throat> uh, there you go. We got a pretty substantial gain. Uh, on on that saw I can feel it in the saw better uh, I got some more I got the side by side comparisons here in the wood coming up right after this so enjoy that if I earned it like it if I didn't don't uh, leave me a comment tell me what you'd like me to see next on that 021 uh, this is just the very first stages uh, if you want me to stop at a uh, maybe a gasket delete and then put it back together and put it on dyno and see what we have let me know what you want me to do. Stick around and watch the rest of this side-by-side uh, -side comparison. You'll see that it basically uh, substantiates what the dyno said, but there's a lot of human error in 